true history that's kept well hidden. This is a part of forbidden history. Now, these letters are in Greek. I'm translating from a Greek article. But as you see, this main body there is actually the Sahara Desert. This is Libya, the Libyan Sea. This was, uh, and the, that continent that you see at the 9, 10 o'clock position on the left is Atlantis just outside of the gates of Gibraltar, basically in the area of the Azores uh, Islands, which are volcanic. So they weren't that far from the west coast of today's Africa. But Libya, Tunisia, Morocco were all sea, shallow sea, but they were sea. Now, there were basically a lot of earth changes since this map of about 6,000, 7,000 B.C., and I guess it was pre-flood, pre-flood. And what could have caused this area to become Sahara, we don't know. But let's keep in mind that even the pyramids of Giza and the Sphinx of Giza was underwater from the watermarks it has. So let's see what this map tells us. Geveros, Greeks, read and spread the following text that explains many things. You read in various blogs about the Greek population and origins and names and regions around the world, but no one explains what they mean. And we have to follow this. The following text uses harsh language and attacks some things that may be considered uh, institutions and integral parts associated with some people's philosophies and temperaments. We're not trying to provoke anyone, but the information provided is important and it's not easy to isolate. So let's just keep that in mind. Kindly support my Patreon account since YouTube has again demonetized my YouTube channel. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below. We do not accept the, uh, that the origins of the people from the three sons of Noah, Ham, Shem, Japheth. And some people say they do not accept the findings of the sages who unanimously divide Iron Age, Bronze Age, Stone Age, and Cotron Age in their brains, stating that from 9,000 to 9,500 BC there was no civilization, but only three breeds of Homo sapiens from monkeys. Okay, so obviously we found a lot of uh, evidence showing us ancient high-tech technology. Now, so they were not Homo sapiens. Obviously, their technology was much more advanced in many ways from, uh, compared to ours. Now, we can't tolerate the obscuration of the uh, certain ancient writings according to creation. And we, we can't tolerate the... Uh, unconsciously uh, penned things concerning Chaldeans, Babylonians, Assyrians, Elamites, Phoenicians, and Egyptians, uh, while their tribal origins are Northern Aryan and Indo-European, Caucasian, Carpathians, and things like that. But there are nightmares among you that will promote the present reference to foreigners. We infer, inform these foreigners that no existing technology can shield their facilities from hearing and the spectacle of um, OEA, whatever that is, which records video cassettes of Descartes because no material is impermeable. Now, matter is transparent and clear as a colorless gas at these speeds at C to the 10th at 6, uh, to the power of 6. And to the irony of the matter, we informed them that our technology was made possible because we relied on the Pythagorean theorem of the dodecahedron ether and the four radius propagation of density and the theory of energy transfer, ascending dilution and, and decrement, the, according to the Orphix text by Democritus and other Greeks and those rhymes convinced. Now, this is the conclusion to the myths of the origin of ancient cultures, Babylonians, Egyptians, uh, Abraham, Jacob of Turkestan. And we return to the subject. 
were called to cover the duration from 9000 BC until 9500 BC, which according to Plato was the time point of the sinking of Atlantis. Rules of logic identity. First, the Mediterranean Sea under its water mass covers in its entirety every ancient Greek cities, which were researched and photographed by private and organized groups of divers and archaeologists. The buildings and the metal sculptures of impeccable art of these underwater Greek cities did not come from the sinking of limited lands caused by the volcanic activity and the eruption between Crete and Santorini in 1500 BC, but from Epirus, that means uh, northern Greece, that was flooded from outside because the seismic action of Santorini area was local and did not include the western and eastern Mediterranean. This is evidenced by the fact that the sunken cities of the Mediterranean still contain buildings and columns with statues in perfect condition and not ruins like the cities at the bottom of Santorini. Second, this fact confirms the Greek chronicles according to which in the place of the Mediterranean there was solid land and the Epirus Aegean, Aegea ceased to exist with the drowning of Aegea, the royal title attributed to the governor of the entire Aegea territory. Third, after the sinking of Aegis, the Pelasgian Greek race appears predominant among the survivors as an indigenous Pelasgian Arcadia. Hesiod mentions that in the new geographical configuration that emerged as the Peloponnese, the first king of the surviving, uh, it says here, uh, the surviving uh, Arcas, uh, uh, sorry. Um, yeah, it was a long, wrong, long, wrong, wrong translation. Uh, the surviving Arcadia was Pelasgian. Arc we know that uh, Pelasgian, there is reference to the ancient Bible, the Holy Bible in the um, Old Testament, having to do with the splitting up of the earth. And one of the um, ancestors was, our forefathers was called Pelasgias, now, uh, which is a Greek name meaning uh, the splitting of the land into uh, Pel Peloponnese, you know, into, uh, oh, I forget the name of it. Anyway, um, Arcas renames the geographically sinking Pelasia to Arcadia, and the cooperation with the cooperation of Tritopolemos, Adristas, and their staffs, he trains the survivors in bas basic survival through cultivation of wheat for food and the use of wheat for clothing, in other words, the threads, right? And uh, it shows that the flood caused a reduction in the fruit-bearing trees and the abundant animals of the former plains that were flooded, as a result of which an attempt was made to artificially cultivate cereals and to avoid slaughtering the animals that were saved in mountainous Arcadia, because according to Pausanias animal skins, Pausanias Arcadian verse 1, 2, and 4, 2.4, Four point two uh, and one. So obviously there was some kind of a an extinction level event that took place here at that time. I'm sorry, I have to correct. I made a mistake. I said the map is from uh, six thousand BC, but it's not. It's from about nine thousand five hundred BC. Now going back to the article, Arcas is said to be the descendant of Pelasian kings who lived before the flood. So this is pre-flood civilizations. They are Nictimos. Lycaon and Pelasgos. We know Pelasgos is a name that we found in the book of Genesis uh, in the Old Testament. That's the time of separation of the uh, uh, land into uh, uh, continents and peninsulas. That's the word I was trying to find. Now, according to Orgigia, the face of Arcadias is identified with Foroneos, brother of Eos and Egailias. The synthetics of Aegeos, Aegean, Alos, and Aegalios prove for the first time the existence of Alu, the hence seashores around Arcadia and Aegida. Foroneos Arcas gathered into the scattered people and set laws of the newly formed homeland. He imposed honors of the citizens to the gods with the female center of worship for Hera in the temple built in her honor in Argos. 
and the Argos is from the Argonauts, that's where they came from. Uh, the ancestor of Lycaon built the city of Lycosura or Lycosuriira on Mount Lycaon, which is considered the oldest city in the world and, of course, of Greece. And according to Greek chronicles in the areas of Crete and Olympus, Zeus was raised by the nymphs Theosoa, Meda, and Agno. The Cretans wrongly claim the origin of Zeus because, according to Strabo, the Cretans are colonists of the Pelasgian Arcadians. And um, in the areas of Crete, we said in Olympus, um, Strabo geographically, Pelasgians, an ancient tribe in Greece, all prevailed, scattering and found, and in fact, despite the Aeolius, according to Tetalian, and the settlers of Greece, Crete are known as from Homer and Pelasgius Argos. Many of the Epirus nations are Pelasgian, and the poet calls Dodonian Pelasgian, Zeus per Dodona, Pelasgian. And uh, according to the whole picture extracted from the Greek chronicles, the Pelasgians were settlers of all Greece, not only but after their migration into Italy, the Tyrrhenian Pelasgian through Limnos, Imvros, Crete, and Cyprus colonized the Near and Middle East to the Mesopotamia and the north and south coasts of the Mediterranean, as well as the coast outside of the columns of uh, Her Heraclius, that is the uh, uh, Strait of Gibraltar. According to Aeschylus in Iketidis, he, uh, he puts in the mouth of the king of Argos these words, I am the child of one who inhabited this place a long time ago. I am Pelasgos, the leader of this country, and from me the genus Pelasgians has taken its name, who reap the land through which the unreadable streamnon passes. My state extends to the land of Perevon, Pindos, and the land of Ponians, the mountains of Dodoni, and its borders reach the sea. I have the power over all of them. After Lycosura and the capital of the Pelasgians before the sinking of the Aegean, Argos was designated the new capital of the Pelasgian territory, Argos of the Argonauts. Argos is basically the area of Sparta in the Peloponnese. So Argos was designated the new capital of the Pelasgian territory with a royal line that ruled the Mediterranean for 484 years. Argos, which during the Arcados Foroneos was called Asti Foronikon, was named after Argos, the son of Niobe and Zeus, the grandson of Foronea, through the daughter of Niobe, who was born from his relationship with Kerdos, or the nymph Laodicea. The fourth item. Niobe's brother, the son of Foroneos, was Apis. He is the same person who was worshipped in Egypt as a god in the form of a bull. Apis typically ruled the Apia Pelasgian, was forced to move to Egypt where he founded a patriarchal colony where he was added to the indigenous Greek tribes of Egypt, an ancient Greek colony which became the first king of Greek Egypt. Item 5. The son of Argos was Forvantas of Forvantas Tripo, Tro, Triopas or Triopas Jason or Jason Aginor who became of a, a tyrannical kingdom was expelled to Asia Minor, whereby the son of Phoenix, the region was named Phoenicia, and his descendants Phoenix. These for the uh, academic masons who, well, the people that don't, that have ignorance as to the facts of where the Phoenicians came from as an independent race, in fact, a race that gave the alphabet to the Greeks, the reality is that Aginor and Phoenix, distributed by the loss of the throne, disturbed by the loss of the throne, transmitted to their descendants their hatred, animosity against their compatriots of Argos. This controversy caused Hellenism a lot of trouble because later in history we see the violent reaction of the Phoenician Greeks against the Pelasgian Greeks, especially in the naval battles. The accident is that in this family dispute they entered in uh, 1943 BC, the Mongols, through the uh, uh, aggravated and co the conflict between the Pelasgians and the Phoenicians, taking advantage of the naval uh, 
knowledge of the Phoenicians for their own geopolitics. So basically, this is a history having to do with pre-flood and the changes, uh, the earth changes that took place and the resettling of this area. And this was basically, as is told in the Old Testament, having to do with our uh, uh, ancestor Pelasgos and his uh, offspring after that. So this is what the earth looked like at that time before the flood. Look at this. This is the Libyan desert was all basically shallow sea, as you can see. Atlantis was out there, so we had a lot of very strange earth changes. This was about 9,000, 9,500 BC. Uh, so basically, this is before that uh, comet impact that we had about uh, 12,000 years ago. Now, sixth, before the Phoenicians, the Minoan Pelasgians ruled the sea, before them the Cyclade Phoenicians, and before them the Argolis Pelasgians uh, as Metropolitan Pelasgians. All basically Pelasgians of various uh, sections of the Mediterranean. Seventh, as a reference to the migration of the Dravidians of the Aegean to India, under the leadership of the historical figure Dionysius uh, uh, of the uh, Satyrs and Bacchus, colonized India. See Theodorus Sicilioti's volume 3, 62. Media, after abandoning the Pelasgian Corinth and um, took refuge in Athens, where she and Aegeus give birth to the Medes, from whom the Medes, that is the Persians, the ancient people of present-day Iran, came into being. Number nine, Zeus and Danai gave birth to Perseus. Perseus gave birth to Persin in his relationship with Andromeda. The Persians colonized Persia and built the city of Artaea, which was a province of Persia. The inhabitants of Persian Arta were considered the heroes of Persia as the genus Zeus and as the most ancient inhabitants of the place. 10. We tried to bring the reader in touch with his roots. The spread of the Palacians in every direction proves a search for vital space for survival after the sinking of the Aegean continent and Atlantis, of course. And we dare to associate the common etymology of the archaic name of Aegis, Dravis, and Dravis, the roots for Dris, Dries, or Dris, the reason that allow us to hypothesize are the symbolism that the Greek priesthood maintained for Dreen, symbolism that have their origins in the initial excessive use of oak, Dris being oak. Oak from the Aegeans as food and as a source of strength, this sanctity, this um, uh, holiness of the oak, then turned into a forbidden taboo tree with the ultimate symbolism for the construction of Argos by black oak. So the ship of the Argos was made of black oak. The Pelasgian diet with um, oak and fruits tell us the role of uh, oak in the ancestral Aegis of Drida. Pausanias mentions that the ancestor Arcadia Pelasgos, again Pelasgos of the Old Testament, had instructed the subjects of Aegean to prefer in their diet oak, oaks that were abundant in the vast um, forests of the hinterland. For this reason, the inhabitants of Arcadia were called Valanofagus, meaning that they ate oaks. The diet with acorns, oaks from the acorns, is still done today by inhabitants of mountainous Arcadia. Oh, I didn't know that. This is something new. When the Spartans later asked for the oracle of Pythia to attack Arcadia, Pythia prevented them from doing so because, quote, it was not possible to defeat the ocean-eating Arcadian, the uh, oak-eating, acorn-eating Arcadian Pelasgians, she said. The Oracle of Delphi. Another reason that confirms the etymology of oaks is the title of the priests or elites of Galatia. Oaks with possible singular oak or dries family and men's synthetics um, uh, names having to do with anodris, uh, andras, andras, dries, andras, suggests a male uh, that comes from the diet with. Uh, Oak fruit, from oak fruits, from acorns of the oak. There are many ways that lead to the conclusion that Aye was called Dravis or Dris or Drios, coming meaning oak, because the dominant tree that covered most of that area was oak. 
and because its fruit was made up of um, acorns. So if the sunken homeland from which we come as descendants of the Pelasgians was called Dravis, from Dris in Greek meaning oak, and the inhabitants were called Dravis, or Dris, we can be called Greeks, Dris, Greeks, Elias, Eli, our country. The combination of the two names would not be unfortunate at all, since the first states the solar speech, and the second the power of the oak of the earth, mother, mother of earth. Now regarding the metaphorical significance of the Greek druids, druids, dreeds, is uh, the druids of ancient, you know, Scandinavia, Scotland, England, they were all from Greek dreeds, meaning, you know, they, they also had their rituals and their covens under the oak trees, right? The, their holy tree was the oak, the dreeds in Greek, the druids, dreeds or dreeds or dravids. Um, so that's where the word druid comes from. It's Greek meaning oak. Uh, the Greek oak gallery, uh, okay, spiritual uh, leadership of the planet. Now, um, the homeland of the druids was around Sparta, like Lycia in Greece, and not Jerusalem, both the symbol and the inoculum belonging to the Greek oak power, and not uh, to other areas. Now, um, at the, the time has come to hand over the uh, scepters of power. I don't know what it says here, but anyway. Um, the Aeolians and Thetalia, the birth of Aeolus, Pelasius, Dreeds, descendants of the birth of Arcados, Pelasgos, descendants of the Minian, Pelagos, came to the, come to the cave of the moon, Anyway, I don't know what it means here, but uh, then it goes on to various um, uh, nations that come from the Pelasgians of Greece, the An Ainu of Japan, from Pelasgos Ainu, the uh, Akaguya uh, in the, from the Tyrannies, the Scythians, Scythians the Ar Arimaspon, the um, Bedouins, Bedouins, the Sarmatans, the um, uh, people of Northern Europe, China, Russia, are of Pelasgian and Tyrannian uh, descendants. So uh, there's a lot more. There's a lot more to this, but I'm not going to go into this. This is a lot of ancient Greek and a lot of. Uh, uh, okay, no, let's go into this. Oh, this has to do with some. Uh, okay, Ham, Shem, and Jaff. Now, the people from the three sons of Noah, Ham, Shem, and Japheth, the uh, Hamitic and uh, ethnological linguistic branches of Noah, we uh, have the findings of people having to do with uh, various ages, but we don't go into the Iron, Bronze, Stone Age and things like that because we have advanced civilization before 9,900, 5,000 BC. Um, miraculously, these three tribes came from Neanderthal man of Paleo, Paleolithic era, although of one color suddenly decided to give birth to offspring of three species, pre-white Mongoloids, pre-yellow Asians, and pre-black Africans, the scientific tale intended for those who uh, can't, under, can't explain this, either there will be written cultural records or otherwise all cases will be rejected, even cases made by um, various establishments. So uh, the tales of Noah and Neanderthal have to be expelled because they can't explain to us the origin of the human race and the biological criteria of the division of the race into three colors. The three colors races because no father ever gave birth to children of three different races and no race in the course of the investigated 9,500 BC split into three or 13 colors. So the uh, rules of logic development, it has to be excluded from the realm of proven logic that the total flood of the planet happened 2490 BC. 
because 2490 BC is contained in the period where, according to the archives of the Louvre Museum and the corresponding ones of the British Museum, the epigraphic findings of Mesopotamia presently continuously, present continuously without inter interruption dynasties named after Semitic kings of Ur. The, uh, we're talking about the Sumerian king list. So, uh, in this case, the university channels tell us that uh, the dynasties of Ur uh, in the period of 2050 BC does not accept the existence of any other culture and it excludes the existence of Greek culture in the range of 2300 to 9000 BC. But it, indir it indirectly supports the Bible, which wants the origin of all earthly races and civilizations from Mesopotamia around 4000 BC. So the bazaar of the truth is, has um, these have to be false dates. We therefore conclude that it, what hurts most is that uh, it can't be that Abraham came out of Ur in 1943 BC. So we can't be convinced by some of these things. Now, this is a very long article, and uh, I can't go into a lot of things about this, but uh, obviously it has to do with the dating and um, the naming of uh, various areas. We know that about 9,000, 9,500 BC, about um, 12,000 years, 12 and a half thousand years ago, uh, we had, again, the cosmic, the comet impact. Could that comet impact have also caused um, earth changes, dramatic earth changes, and changes in uh, the area of uh, the uh, Mediterranean, Middle East, Northern Africa, as we see from this map? It seems that that's what has happened. And that's uh, what the Old Testament probably refers to as the dividing of the land, the changing of the land, and the uh, descendants of Belazgos and his um, and that time of uh, the uh, land changing and peninsulas and everything. So please uh, leave your comments. Thank you for your support. I'm sorry this was so long, but it shows that they stretched into areas from Middle East to China to India to Russia to Scythia to Northern uh, Europe, and of course that was also the time of the sinking of Atlantis.